to, to it uh, in October, um, if not before, we'd be in a much stronger position now uh, than, than we were at, 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 uh, at the turn of the year. I feel like some specifics there, just in that position. Now, um, other than that, clearly, the Oracle, like every other system, as you're saying, we're looking at the Oracle system to say, what do we have to do for the future, for the future for the more upgrades we need to do that, or alternative ways to do this. So, it's one of several that we're looking at. I think, um, yeah, it's called the Oracle system. Yeah, I'm just going to add to that. Um, I think we're looking at the Oracle system to say, what do we have to do for the future, for the more upgrades we need to do that.
want to bet you if next week's word, the next week's the following week's come in. So we've actually gone through a framework agreement, <coughs> contract, agree the price, which has been benchmarked to say that this is good for the best for the money. And then we're calling up and getting the full money. Until, until the um, discount or the savings we made by because of the scale, and um, that swallowed the storage and insurance costs of the houses. Yes, by, by doing it the way we're doing it, um, we don't pay for the bonded warehouse costs because we're keeping it in the bonded warehouse for less than a month. If we kept it for a long time, then we would. So that's why we're buying in, in smaller batches so we manage the cost down. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very quick now. Obviously, our laptops that we've got at the moment have been on base stations, which the uh, home industry has fried all the batteries. Uh, are we going to a different system? Because now we can't take them off the base stations and take them away like we're supposed to do because the battery. The truth I'm suggesting at the moment we've got most of our HP machines get a bit of a go and that would decide something a while ago. The same docking station for the uh, new docking stations, new ones, and new people use them. Uh, but what we'd like to do is make sure that we actually complete the pilot and then plan the members in to part of the rollout. So these new base stations are going to be one Friday uh, batteries mm -hmm. up here. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is you can't take your laptop off the base station and take it down here as we were supposed to be doing yeah. because I'm glad that I do not believe so. No. These are brand new, new models, new ideas, so I think sure that's what they Thanks, Steve. I think, um, I think Mr. Shubish is sure to know that we've actually given a session that we can propose and manage. You know, we're the guy I've seen with that, which is, which is the first time, to my knowledge. Yeah. So, I look forward to the future. Um, Work streams, and we can you know, definitely get a, as members, you know, get a key grip on where we're up to and where we need to improve our customers. So, is everyone happy to, to? Sorry, I just want to ask a very brief question because maybe I was a bit unclear what he said. He said he wanted to upgrade. Just, sorry. He needs to have some reason there, John. Uh, sorry, it was a very, very quick question. He said that. He, <laughs> well, it was only. Well, it was a very quick question, although it would take up a few seconds to ask. He said that he wants to upgrade all the computers to Windows 7, but 90% of them aren't good enough. What's going to happen to the 90% of computers that you're not going to need anymore, and how much are you going to get for that? Are you going to sell them off, or, or what's going to happen to them? Shall I? Just uh, we'll, we'll provide you a response to that. Okay. Sorry, what was it? I didn't quite catch the last bit. We'll, we'll provide you a re 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 response. Okay. okay. Seems to be putting the things in there. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Financial management report. Thanks, Chair. Just last of the report, this again is part of the city's part of the standard suite of papers which come to uh, policy performance committee uh, meetings. Um, I just want to draw attention to, <laughs> to four key points in the major. Uh, just on page, on page 81, um, paragraph 3.4, uh, we're demonstrating uh, where we are as a transformation resources uh, director of the budget. Uh, you can see that we're, we're underspending um, at month 10 uh, of £420,000, uh, and the detail of why that is in particular is highlighted within those particular paragraphs. Uh, over the page on page 82, draw attention to uh, where we're up to in terms of our savings, uh, monitoring and tracking. Um, and again, I think it has been reported to this committee on a number of occasions. Um, one of the, uh, the, the red op rated option, which is our, our core cost in relation to, to council tax. Um, we do know that we, we, we reported to you previously around the accountancy uh, issue around that, and there was a, a, an underestimate in terms of the amount of funding that we expected uh, to, be, to be charged uh, as part of council tax core costs. Um, therefore, we, 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 we can't address that. Uh, so we had to meet that from, from within the council resources, so that, that was read and obviously will remain read. Um, in terms of the ANVA related options, I did refer to the uh, transforming business support 
and how that is uh, now marked with the future council. Again, just to reaffirm that that doesn't mean the transforming business support um, uh, financial targets have gone away. They've just been incorporated within, within the future council program. Uh, similarly, with regards to procurement, that uh, forms part of our commissioning and procurement target of uh, uh, five million pounds uh, over the next two years. And our workforce conditions of service, I think we've always anticipated that this would be made under um, because it assumed that we would have the, 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 um, the, 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 the signed agreement with the trade unions as of April last year, which, 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 which didn't happen, it was actually signed in June, so we're always going to be uh, three months behind in terms of that, so we've had to rely on, on internal resources to cover that uh, in, the current, in, in the financial year. Um, just linked to, I think, uh, the final bit of what I wanted to draw attention to was at page, um, page 83, top page 83, in terms of the amounts collected. Um, I think hopefully that does give us, give us a sense of reassurance, and, and it may answer part of Councillor Gilchrist's question uh, earlier, or more than happy for himself or Malcolm to expand upon that. I think we can see some quite high level target, uh, high level recoveries uh, in terms of council tax business rates and our, our other charges, uh, other services fees and charges. And it is obviously in terms of the, the rather sensitive nature of, uh, of adults uh, charges to which we have the, the lower uh, recovery rates. But I would like want to re-emphasise I think a point that Malcolm did make. That doesn't necessarily mean to say that we won't recover that debt. Uh, what happens is we do put charges into people's properties to work with them to, to, to take um, um, smaller amounts on, on, a, on a consistent basis that actually uh, gets the benefit in, in, in trade. So I think it, it's not always do we have to go with, in with, the, with, with the hard line, um, either pay the full debt collection approach, uh, we try and do everything we can beforehand in, to manage that rather sensitive, but nevertheless significant amounts of money that we do need to recover as part of the, the adult social care charging arrangements, which of course will, will be subject to further review uh, onto the social care uh, uh, before it uh, comes into operation uh, in, in, in 15, 16. Thanks, Joe. So I'll also say in terms of work, work in terms of our current financial position. Thanks, Chair. It's regarding the pursuing on council tax revenue you know, um, uh, With regards to pursuing some more support, is that a legal requirement to allow our council? Or someone has not responded to, you know, demand after demand. Um, but also, I know that we we issue income and expenditure forms, so you know, hopefully, because the idea is we can reach some kind of repayment plan before it ever gets to this point. And unfortunately, most people do get to that point because you ignore everything else that comes with your When you're assessing what you what, what we would <coughs> describe as an essential expenditure, is that a national? Is that nationally agreed thing, or is that because that's very much subjected to each individual council or organisation that are pursuing that? Through you, Jeff, if we do have our residence experts in terms of council tax recovery, is that be okay to invite into the chair? Thank you, Chair. Yes, <coughs> with regards to some of this, it is a legal requirement that once we've gone through the reminder or final notice policy, we have to issue a summons which will lead to a liability order. Uh, at that point, that is where we would then ex put out the expenditure forms and um, where we look at both essential expenditure and what income uh, you are correct. It, it is a international set thing. A lot of authorities do use generally similar ones, but it is a local lease. It's subject to a local discretion. Our individual staff will look at what is essential expenditure, which clearly, given what you're looking at, is yes, it is down to us to decide what is viewed as essential, which will be different from local authority to local authority. But we will generally reflect, for instance, what we do. <coughs>
that's talked about <coughs> to the end of January when the table of other talks about the end of the 30th of November. Thank you, Martin. Who you chair with regards if we start on page 91? Um, my apologies, that is incorrect. It shouldn't be the of the 30th of November. That should be 31st or 1st of 14. Um, um, so the breakdown um, is at the 31st of January. Um, I think as your previous question, you identified that there were 11 and a half million at third reminder out of a total of 22. Um, again, third reminder, it should be more ex um, detailed in that it is third reminder and beyond. So we can tell us that they're also taking effectively, as you can see, if you use the four find down families, that is where the families and well-being, that is where the uh, adult social services debts are, and uh, effectively that is why that is the largest one. And that should reflect approximately to what was on the PIs, which showed how much we've raised. During the particular quarter, you can see uh, if you use that family, we raised nearly 5 million, uh, it's less than 28 days old as a bill. So that does show the enormous amounts that go through, uh, particularly in the adult social services, which will be the areas I will deal directly with. First, the finance unit, first, then to the ancillary care, as well as where adult social services will raise directly on the Sunday better system. So that could be big bills with regards to national health service and care providers. And so that is why that will always be the largest one. And um, with regards to the question with regards to discussion in housing uh, payment, which is on um, page 92, yes, this, this report was written prior to um, the DWP's late announcement that we were given an additional £150,000. And adding on to the £950,000 that we already have, we have, we have been busy spending that uh, to try and maximise the amounts that we had spent. Um, I haven't got the final figures with me. We clearly, given we had less than six weeks to spend, because obviously you can't spend until you've got it, um, it was trying to ensure that we were as close as we could do to spend the all of it. Um, and eventually we would report as to the amounts that we managed to get up to. And um, clearly, I do know, again, with an old hat on, that we have not overspent, otherwise that would be a call. It was trying to make sure that we got as close as we can do to DHP. We are now working on our discretionary housing payment awards for 14 and 15, and as yet we await any announcements that there would, could be additional funding available for us uh, to also make a call on, which again, we would make a call on if we can do. Benefits. 
as we work out what the weekly amount is, about £2.40 or £3.60, depending if it's a single or a couple. Uh, that takes several years, so what you'll actually find is we will have in our office them ready to be put to DWP to make a regular weekly deduction. They will tend to be effectively low cost to recover, but they are also low amounts. Um, I can certainly give you a breakdown because we do have them uh, for yearly amounts. Again, not unreasonably because, as you'll see, the report here is how much we will collect over the year, which is 95-ish percent. The other five percent then tends to come in approximately six, 50 to 60 percent the year following, and then it drops off year by year towards the seven, the seventh year when we will not collect. Although it's true that um, a debt is statute barred after seven years, if I take an action, I can actually keep recovering on it. So, for instance, people on deductions from bank can actually continue because we've taken the correct action uh, on that, and it will be able to be recovered. But normally, it's seven years by the time our action has been taken in the state of our tax. I'd be really grateful for that information. And if we, could, if we could have something that indicates perhaps what we've spent previously on collecting year by debt and how much we've got back with that find out whether we've been losing money to do that or not, I'd be ever so grateful. And, and, and to find out if we were to decide to minimise the cost of recovery, how much we could reduce the cost by. Is that okay? Thank you. Thank you. Can you share with the, the committee, please? Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Just one question, Mark, on page 19. Um, Council tax debt discretion review is important. Uh, an application form has been placed on the web. No awards have been made to date since October for the 96 application form. I just wanted to find no awards have been made to date. Through you, Chair, this was at the 31st of January. Um, I know because I also I'm starting to deal with appeals, and that comes to myself when the officers have made the decision. Uh, so the appeal process is now starting to kick in where people are unhappy. Um, the simple answer of the discretionary policy is that what we're looking for is exceptional circumstances. Largely and regrettably, most people are now highlighting that the reason that they can't pay is exactly what you would expect. The is to effectively uh, all the people that have found the 22% payable, which is that they haven't got enough money um, to uh, meet their debt. The issue we have is how we then share a maximum of 50,000 amongst effectively all the other issues. We are looking for an exceptional circumstance, something that stands out different. For instance, some of the questions you asked earlier, are the children involved, is there a disability, or is it just purely I do not have enough money? That does give us a situation where we have to look at something to decide how we should actually give something to somebody whose circumstances are exactly the same as potentially 10,000 others. So at that point, with the first few that we were looking at, that is giving us an issue that we are now trying to consider how we ensure we use the 50,000 as well as we can do, but with regards to something that is exceptional. And I know that is being looked at because certainly my managers are coming to me to discuss how we then maximise this use of this 50,000 pounds. during the first year, um, so we have been advertised, publicised, both on the web. There is information now that says, if you have hardship, please contact us, we will try and do it. Um, I think with any of these, as to whether or not it's reaching everybody, uh, certainly I'm not sitting here and saying it's reaching everybody who wants to apply for it. It is us trying to highlight it, but equally, it is a fairly small amount. Um, because uh, in this year and last year, 22% payments by £222. If, um, and therefore, you can work out it probably uh, works out to my maths are right. Um, I think it's 250 could be met with four or five hundred if they got half. So there isn't that much there, and we've got to try and make sure that we use it effectively for the most deserving cases, and that will continue this year as well. Okay. Um, when people are awarded benefits, um, 
my understanding is that those things are based on the immediate minimum person who's expected to live on the minimum. Is council tax factoring into this within the and if it's not, which I suspect it's not, because people were getting full council tax benefits up until this uh, new scheme was brought in. Um, how 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 are councils expected to deduct money for what is already a legal minimum? What because we're now therefore leaving people without minimum to live on, and then they end up coming back to us other ways, you know. Through you, Chair, uh, if I understand, when we uh, ask, because we ask as an authority for 22% payment, that could be about £220 for a band day or 100% payment. Once we have a liability.